Hi, my name is Annie Gentilkratz, and this is my initial oral presentation for the Photography MA of Falmouth University. I was born French Eurasian in Laos. At the end of the Vietnam War, my family had to move to France to escape persecution. We had a French name, and it was clear we had French ancestors. My family settled in Normandy, a region in the north of France where I grew up first in a very multicultural council estate and then in a private residence closer to Rouen, the biggest city in the area. The first pictures I can remember were family pictures and portraits taken by relatives and friends of the family. Photography really started for me in 2012 when I decided to create my own teaching website. I was a freelance French teacher and wanted to work for myself. I started taking digital photography and filmmaking courses with CityLit, a college for adults based in central London. I wanted to take the pictures and record the video testimonials for my website myself. I started spending more and more time and money buying materials and travelling to France on a regular basis. My very first photo project was to travel all around France to take pictures for my website to show my students all the different facets of the country, the various architectures, landscapes, people, events, the different regional specialities. I documented everything that could be of interest, even parties and personal events I was invited to. I created a photography group, organized photography walks, exhibition visits, competitions, and I watched many documentaries about famous photographers and read many books. I thought that one way to learn how to direct models and to see how other photographers worked was to model for them. I started modeling for photographer friends, student photographers and also professional photographers. In 2017, we were photographed by Chris Till Perkins as part of his book project The New Londoners. And in 2019, we were photographed by Martin Parr as part of his fundraising event. This gave us a little insight into their work. I was also willing to try any photography opportunity that came my way. Lingerie photography, documentary photography, taking pictures at events and concerts, producing corporate headshots and architectural photographs for a company in Berlin, and more recently creating fine art pictures and working as a wedding photographer. In 2017, I joined the Holborn Group, a collective of artists, and we organize regular group exhibitions. It's a great opportunity to show some of my photographs. I love the fact that photography is a good way to connect with people and get to know them. I generally thrive on human interactions and therefore I do enjoy portrait and documentary photography. Being French, I've been greatly influenced by humanist photographers like Robert Doineau and Henri Cartier-Bresson. Humanist photographers place the human beings at the center of their work. They photograph humans in everyday life. In 1994, Henri Cartier-Bresson wrote, My passion has never been for photography in itself, but for the possibility, through forgetting yourself, of recording in a fraction of a second the emotion of the subject and the beauty of the form. To me, photography is a good excuse to talk to people and connect in a very easy and straightforward way. Contrary to Susan Sontag, who wrote in 1979 that to photograph people is to violate them, I firmly believe that photography can be an exchange, a collaboration, and can empower people and not just the photographer. Some of the first books I read in 2012 to improve my photography skills were written by David Duchemin, a Canadian photographer with a deep respect for his models and people in general. On his website, he describes himself as a humanitarian photographer. In 2013, I visited the Sebastiao Salgado Genesis exhibition at the National History Museum. I was mesmerized by his powerful pictures. They showed the sheer beauty of the environment, our place in it, and the connection we have with other living beings. I love his attitude towards people and the environment. In his Genesis work, he pushed the idea further with respect not only for human beings, but for all animals and the planet as well. 
Sebastião Salgado has been criticized for the beauty and aesthetic of his images, which can be in sharp contrast with the themes he tackles. But his pictures transcend the simple depiction of people and places to convey a deeper message. He does admit openly that his pictures are made and produced with his political and ideological ideas. I read the book Camera Lucida by Roland Barthes a few weeks ago, and his theory of the studium and punctum resonated with me. He described the studium as being a kind of general interest when looking at a picture. Describing the studium, he said, the spectacle interests me but does not prick me. On the contrary, the punctum is, according to him, this element which rises from the scene, shoots out of it like an arrow and pierces me. That is the element which triggers a deeper emotional reaction. I will definitely aim during this Emmy to give more strength and punctum to my pictures. Following the death of George Floyd in the United States and the Black Lives Matter demonstrations that happened just at the beginning of the course, I have started to explore the theme of racism. In the book White Fragility by Robin D'Angelo, I discovered how, at a time when the idea of equality started to develop, a slave owner, Thomas Jefferson, asked scientists to find differences between white and black people to be able to justify unfair treatment. The science journalist Angela Saini, the author of The Return of Race Science, explained in a recent webinar that at the time of the Enlightenment, scientists wanted to categorize flora and fauna and tried to categorize humans as well, but this was very arbitrary. Some people counted millions of races and others only a few. As you can see in the article confronting the colonial archive published in the Guardian newspaper in 2019, the British Colonial Office appointed N.W. Thomas as the first government anthropologist and he conducted surveys in South Nigeria and Sierra Leone between 1909 and 1915. It was the height of colonialism when the ideas of superiority and differences were prevalent, and this is reflected in his work. He photographed many subjects with a number board over their heads as identification, and this dehumanized them even more. Biologically, there is only one human race, and variations of skin color hair color and eye color are all influenced by environmental factors. The idea of different races is a social construct that has no real scientific basis. During this MA, I would like to explore the theme of racism from different angles. I would also like to explore the French identity and the various ethnic groups in France. In the introduction of the book Dandelion, Chantrel P. Lewis, the author, says that photographs play an important role in countering negative stereotypes. I will try to go in this direction and change the way ethnic minorities and migrants are sometimes perceived. The MA in photography will hopefully consolidate my current practice and give me a better sense of direction. By defining more clearly my style and my objectives, setting clear goals to achieve and pushing me forward, I would love to develop my current projects and explorations further and create a photo book to share my work at the end of the course. Ultimately, I would love to teach photography and share this passion. As Sebastião Salgado said so clearly, it's a privilege to be a photographer. Thank you for listening.